na 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 You know you need to tune in if you want to hear um you know so we uh Chad, Josh, Demetrius, and Marcus every Friday. You know it's the square round table. Tune in. It's the square round table. Tune in every Friday. Let's have a blast. I know it worked. You had a long day. Just relax and tune in. Make sure you tune in weekly, every Friday. Majorsonmusic.com. We also tune on Spotify, iHeartRadio, and uh, YouTube. So yeah. What's going on, my freaks and geeks? This is the Square Round Table Podcast. I'm so happy to have all of you guys with us tonight. Look, guys, tonight we have a very special guest. Our guest is a voice actor who has more than represented for the African-American community by bringing to life so many amazing characters of color. And this includes Black Manta, Black Lightning, and everyone's favorite friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, Miles Morales. Please, guys, give it up for Mr. O.G. Banks. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> Georgie, what's going on, Hello, man? guys. How you guys doing? Thanks for having me. Oh, thanks for being here. Oh, yeah, thanks for sure. Good. For sure. Yeah. No, it's, it's awesome. We really appreciate it, you know, you coming out. I know you got a busy schedule. Just the fact that we were able to get you, like, right before uh, Black History Month is over so we can get a chance to honor you and your career and everything you've done for representation for the African-American community. It's, it's awesome, man. So we, we appreciate thanks, all of man. it. It's been a long road, but thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> 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 that's what's up hey it's all good stuff man it's all good stuff but and you said it's been a long road we wanted to know like the beginnings like of your career like in general just what made you want to pursue uh voice acting i know before that you were singing and all of this good stuff so what made you wanted to get into just performance art period oh uh, let me just without the long story bottom line is my very first big voiceover job was space jam and uh, when i worked space hmm. jam that's when I really, Ivan Reitman, a TK Carter, those gentlemen really put it within me that I'm legit, I should go for this. And to really do my thing, gave me the confidence and really, really pushed me towards it. Because I was like, if I'm working with Ivan Reitman, he did Ghostbusters and all this, I'm like, yeah, I must be, I must be decent. I must be doing something <laughs> right, you know? And it was the thing of, I didn't want to, I didn't want to be like, I want to do on camera so I could be on TV and this and that. No, I just right. went with my, just whatever was organic, my life calling. You just gotta follow what's in front of you. And that's what I did. That's what I did. So I, so after, so from that point, from once I got Space Jam, I really jumped and I said, okay, let me dive and find out all about voiceovers. I never knew there was like specific voiceover agents. And mm -hmm. I never really paid attention to all the commercials and the radio commercials. And I was like, everything has a voice. I was like, what well, voices? There's voices all over the place, but you don't really know until you start paying attention. I was just right. like all over the place. But from that point on, I really took it upon myself to really move forward with it. Of course, I, I took some classes. I started taking some classes, just general stuff, just to get some knowledge, just to know what it was all about, just to cross my T's, dot my I's. Um, For sure. But once yeah. I got in, uh, but it's funny. So when I say long road, it's so once, but once I really got my agent and started booking jobs like, like cartoons and stuff, I won't forget that my first cartoons that I would get like Pigs Next Door and stuff, I would go in there and I would be there for the whole recording session, which would be for hours. But I would have one, two lines, but that was a big deal back I then. Bet, that, yeah. was like a, that was a huge deal. I was like a brother on the show. And, but every show that I was on, the black guy only had one. <laughs> or or yeah, I came yeah. in, or I came in with ice cream, popcorn. I would come in like that, and I would and I would just like wait. I was like I would say in my mind, I can't wait till I actually get to act and do some stuff. I would work with all these people. I'm like I want to work. I want some lines. Write some lines for me. Give me something. I want to eat. I want to show my talents. I've been working so long at it. So as time went on. And once that really like Monster High, when I did like Monster High, which like some years later, but Monster High, that was like a show that they really catered to my acting st skills. Like they would mm. give long monologues. The writers would come to me and said, say, we've been studying your work. You're great at this and this. And they would write actually for me. And 
I would have some meaty things to like eat, eat and say and perform. And, and then it would get better and better. It's like, and, and then move on to a current day, like playing Miles Morales and stretch arm on stretch Armstrong and gigs like that. It's like coming a long way from going into sessions and just having one line, but sitting there for eight hours just to say one line to now I go in and I'm actually, I'm in the show. Right. <laughs> I'm in the show. You know what I mean? I'm not just, I'm not just a little piece of it. That's in the show. Yeah. But in the show, I am a Muppet. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> right. It's, like, wow. it's, just, it's come a long way. It's come, it's come a long way. So that's what I mean by a long road. That's my, yeah. I don't know if I kept that a short story, but that's my, <laughs> no, that's perfect. Hey, that's all good. All right, Keep all it good. going. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah well, um, Oh, what were you, you saying, Chad? Oh, no, go ahead, Josh. What's up, man? Yeah. Well, yeah, OG, what was the process of organizing a specific material for, the, like, your your employer to use to see how they'd be able to place you in the specific role? Did you have a website or a uh, so What I did is, okay, truth be told, honest, I got a, after Space Jam, I'm still an actor working here and there. And like, I got paid where I'm, like, comfortable. You know, right. so, yeah. so I'm like, what I did is once I found out about VO, I took, you have to, I found out in order to get an agent, you have to have a demo. Like you have to make a demo, like what you're saying, something that shows your voices, shows your acting skills all on the, on that level. So at that, I remember, I'd never forget. I called, I told my dad, I sat down to my dad, I said, dad, I'm, I'm just going to, I'm going to invest in myself. I'm taking all my savings. I took all my savings at that time. It wasn't that much. And I said, I'm just going to throw it all and do this demo I'm thing and, and try to get me an agent and stuff and go for it. And he goes, hmm. okay, okay, you sure? I got, I go, if I'm going to believe in anybody, I got to believe in me, right? So, sure. um, yeah. so I remember I took all my savings and this guy, uh, Bill Holmes, that was his name, who I did, who I did my uh, demo with, my very first demo, really worked with me. Like we really got me different characters, different, really got to know me, really got my style. But then again, remember Long Road, I told you since before high school, I, you know, like, or high school, I was driving all the way up to the Valley, like for hours just to take my acting classes every two, three times a week. So this is the reason why I took my classes. This was the moment. Yeah. So I just, I just put my all into that demo. And, uh, and I remember I had a friend, I had a friend that was at, that was at a very top, voiceover agency and I was like could you please could you please hear my hear my CD and she was like oh I got you OG oh I got you OG <laughs> and I said oh my gosh thank you so I gave her my CD and yeah. then some weeks went by and I said so did you do it did you what happened and she said yes and no and I said what do you mean because she said she was going to talk me up tell me how talented I was all that and she said, I went in, it was the holiday time and I went in there with some cookies and she goes, as I was walking out, I put it on the assistant's desk and I just walked out. And then, that's it. That's it. Them is my name, no nothing, right? Right, wow. right. <laughs> but but, yeah. but uh, being a top eight, they saw that, they listened to it. They listened to it and they're like, oh, who's this? They called me up. And they said, uh, we'd like a meeting with you. I had a meeting. My very first meeting that I had with them, they called me in there and they said, you're with us. You're signed with us. You're not going anywhere else. You don't need to do anything else, blah, blah, blah. And when I called my friend and said, hey, I just got signed. She was like, what? Are you kidding me? I'm like, oh. <laughs> but from there, it's like the long road thing. It's, I would see people getting lots of auditions, but me being a brother, there really weren't a lot of black auditions back then. So wow. I would get mm. probably like a couple auditions a week, maybe for something. It, and that was good. When I'd see others getting like, every, you know, they go every day getting like 10 pieces of coffee for Taco Bell and Fish King and Jay Beavers. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I pulled a I pulled a card from the back on that JJ Beepers. <laughs> <laughs> but JJ was the king of Beepers out here, right? So <laughs> JJ Beepers. That's, that's, that's old Beepers. school. That's I'm old school, JJ, man. And I'm the king of Beepers. And, and <laughs> he was. He was. Um, but anyway, anyway, they get all these auditions, and I come in there. Like I remember, I'd have my job. I work early, early in the morning, so I could go to my audition. But, mm. and I, you're running there, 
with my like work shirt on and everything. And I'd be like, I'm here to read. I'm here to read. Okay, OG, we need you to say this one word. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> yeah, oh, what? <laughs> and it was like, but you know what? You can't complain. You got to play the game. I played the game and that happened for years, man. Until wow. finally started rolling. But you got to, it was the long road. Got to pay your dues. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So I guess that's definitely a, I guess a road that you have to take. You got to yeah. take those one liners, those two line roles. Yes, definitely. Exactly. Like you, you got to have some skin in the game. Like mom and dad say, Chad. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, yeah. Definitely, definitely got to gotta definitely cut your teeth. Yeah. yeah get oh, that yeah. experience, you know, you know. It's good to have that because you, I could sit back and I learned from all these other skilled actors. So I remember Butt Ugly Martians, the show I did Butt Ugly Martians. Right. With, yes. um, with I remember Jeff, that. Like, you know, Rob Paulson, yeah. Jess Harnell, yeah. bang, bang. We're, we're talking about Robert Stack now. Boom. Heavy all hitters, these heavy yeah. hitters. All these heavy hitters. And then here come OG Banks. You know what I mean? Here come, you know, here come me, you know? But what it did, though, is like, when it wasn't my time, I didn't just sit back or anything. I studied. I paid, That was my class. I paid huh. attention to everything. I paid attention to what they didn't do, what they said, what they didn't say, you know, how to be a professional, how to get the next job, how to come in prepared, what, how to keep it loose, not to be tight. But I really learned from those guys and they gave me a lot of good tips. Yeah, totally. Hmm. Yeah. At what point did you uh, feel like you really got your style as an actor? Because you talked about that uh, before, just when you figured out the way that you would attack certain roles. I didn't know until, I didn't really know I had a really a, a style, to be honest, until Bumper Robinson told me. And I remember he was like, he goes, OG, oh, everybody knows your style and everything. And I go, Bumper, I got a style. <laughs> like, really? He goes, OG, oh, everybody know when it's your, your voice. And I said, oh, oh. Oh, they know my crazy. No, but it, but I was like, but that sunk in when he said that. I was like, oh, yeah, stop. I talk about it a lot, but I never mm-hmm. incorporate that with myself because I'm just going, I'm uh, auditioning, working this job, auditioning, working. I'm trying to get to the next. And but I need to take time to, to stop, breathe, and notice, appreciate, realize, analyze, be in the space, be in the world, and enjoy the ride and that's one thing that i've learned the most is not to be so like uh, tight but to enjoy just enjoy the ride the more you enjoy the ride the better your characters and everything is going to be people are going to want to be around you want to work with you and yeah yeah no i i can appreciate that because i think that goes a lot with um with everything because a lot of the times people you're and i've done it too you're so um ready to get to this thing that you just you don't pay attention to the, to the now like you said you don't enjoy the ride you're just trying to get to that destination mm-hmm. and i really think that i really think that can that can hurt really because you don't really appreciate where you are in that moment and i guess that for you specifically that could affect the way that your acting style and the work that you put into every individual character, no matter how big or small the role is, right? Yeah, totally. Because mm. if, if you go in, if you go into that audition, if you're reading that audition and you're tight, you don't sound tight. If you go in reading that audition and you like you were in traffic and mm. all kinds mm. of things are happening, and then you go in there and read, oh, that's gonna come out. The more statistics, you know how people know when somebody hit a baseball, did something, or when somebody scored so many touchdowns, or when somebody dunked. Now, I'm a huge basketball fan, love basketball. Statistics, I don't keep in my head. Why? Because I need that area to create, okay? I need creative Uh, space. I need creative space. I don't need to, if if I'm jumbled with numbers and everything over here, that's, I'm going to lose out on, this is just me personally, I will lose Mm -hmm. out on creativity, you know what I mean? And I just need to keep my improv skills, my creative skills, my just like on it skills, like all the time. And that's how I do it. Just immersing myself in my field, in my world. But what we were saying, Chad, like, but learning how to just slow down a little bit, see my world, incorporate my own world, have my own world, not be a slave to my job. And- yeah. Exactly. But, but yeah, OG, what if you have a character that, that relies specifically on aggression? Do you focus more on those like particular things that may affect you personally? Or do you yeah. still? What happens if I, when you book the job, when I'm in there, the director 
so gets you into the moment. Mm. So, mm. so once you're in, no matter what show I'm on, these directors are just so phenomenal that they explain everything. They tell you the whole story to where uh, I don't have to close my eyes. I'm in the scene. I'm in the scene. They paint the picture so much that I'm in the scene. When it's a fighting scene, they paint the picture. They tell me how it's a fighting scene and what I'm doing and how to keep my love, my, my fighting energy up. They tell, they'll tell me if my fighting energy is low, they're like, I need to pump it up a little bit. But they really, it's a team effort. It's a team effort. And especially nowadays, since COVID, a lot of the recordings are individual. Now, like now when we did Ultimate Spider-Man, we were all in the room together. Now, mm -hmm. it's, it's like being all in the room together. You can bounce off of each other. You get the energy from each other. You get the vibe from each other. Being in a room by myself, and then my director is on Zoom on another. So, okay, I got to jump myself into the scene by myself. You know what I mean? And right. I really got to get there. So that's where it takes, it's a team effort where the director, that engineer that's there, they're all... I understand why we need all these different people to make it go. Yeah, so when it comes to the aggression, I really rely on I really rely on the director for me to have the aggression. Now, it depends on the show too. Baki would be probably like the one of my more hardcore aggression kind of shows. Yeah. Usually when it's fight Spider-Man and stuff, it's like that's fighting, but it's not MMA. Yeah. You know? And I'm telling you, when I was recording mm -hmm. Baki, like they, I would see the scene and like my hand would break and the bones would come and I'm like, oh, I'm just naturally. I was like, ooh, I would feel it inside. That gave me chills. I'm like, oh, I never did anything like this. Well, I, I never got my, none of my characters ever got beat up that bad, you know? Oh, you yeah. Know? Them and Baki, was, they're no, that's no, no Baki's rough. That's no <laughs> joke. Like, and not only did I get beat up, but I'm trying to steal my best friend's girlfriend. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's all, man. Are you it's kidding? all going on. I was like, I was reading, I was like, what is this? What is this? <laughs> <laughs> How do I even voice this stuff? That's a lot of, that's definitely a lot of good stuff. And you mentioned something pretty much like about there not being a space for a lot of like African-American characters. When did you see that shift start to happen where there were a lot more like superhero representation, cartoon representation. Like when did that happen for you? It, it really happened once really like Shrek, I'd say, I could say Shrek was like the jump of everything. Once wow. Eddie, Murphy, Eddie Murphy and all those cats did that. And once Hollywood saw that they made so much money off of that with so little, let's just say so much profit. You know what I mean? No, that makes so sense. Much oh, yeah. off of, that's when, that's when people would say, aren't you, aren't you, isn't that bad that celebrities are getting into it? And it's no. Remember back <laughs> in the day, when, how many, how it would be one cartoon, one cartoon movie a year would come out. That, yeah. That's, yeah. that's the way it would be. Now, all of a sudden, we got cartoons coming out like all the time. Every, all all the, time. the time. Okay. Every okay. Time. Yeah. And so, so what does that mean? Mo work. <laughs> Opportunity. So yeah. back in the day, when remember I said I would go in there and I'd go in there maybe once a week for an audition because that's all there would be for a black mm. person. It's just one. But now that's what I'm saying, a long road, it's a lot more opportunity. But I would say from that Shrek, from the Shrek point, that's when the green light started going for all these like kind of animation projects. It started like really rolling, rolling, rolling. Yeah. No, that makes a lot of sense because I mm -hmm. just thinking about it, you made a great point. And I just because we're so bogged down now with so many like TV shows and animated shows coming out or movies, you forget about the time where like Toy Story was like the only animated movie coming out that summer exactly. or <laughs> Monster Zine. And, and, pretty I'm, much <laughs> and I'm gonna show my age a little bit. You can even go back to Batman, Mask of the Phantasm. Oh, yeah, that was, like, one of the biggest animated films to be yeah. out. Yep. Uh, Oh, I love that movie and everything. So see, see y'all feeling me. You feel yeah. it. We feel yeah. it. We're there with you, man. We're there. <laughs> and, and then just to piggyback off of you, Chad, talking uh -huh. about you know um, African Americans and voice acting. I even remember back when I was younger. To to be honest, there's only two that I just know, like off the top of my head, that I always remember their voices and everything. And that's uh, Phil Lamar. And Keith David because they were like always the, you know, <laughs> yeah. like, the great heroes and stuff. So <laughs> it's crazy now, like with you, OG, and like everybody else is like everywhere now. But back, you know, when we were a little younger, it was probably like a couple guys in the game. Yep. So like, yep. do you feel like those guys really set the you know, the bar for everybody else coming after them? 
They did. I, uh, yeah, Phil Lamar has helped me tremendously. He is, he is one of the smartest people I know. I can tell you that. When he has his degree from like Yale or Harvard or something like that. Oh. And, and then, his, and, he, and he does this, but uh, he is just, I love working with him because uh, whenever I work with him, I'm just like, damn, brother. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm like, where did that come from? I'm like, who right. did that? <laughs> I, I'll never forget, we did a, it was for MTV. We were doing like a, it was like this puppet thing, but I played Biggie Smalls coming from the swamp, but it was all these celebrities. And, and I remember we were all there practicing and everything. And Phil just came in at his time and he was playing Donald Trump. And I remember I was like, how, what is he, how, how what is this, what is this going to be? You know, and then when he came in and killed it and I was <laughs> like, Oh, that's <laughs> I said, this brother is mm, hot. I, said, <laughs> you know, I mean, and it's and because it's I've worked with him so many times, so it's like he is consistent with his craft. He is on point. Now, Keith David is one of the coolest MFs I I'm ever telling, seen. right? <laughs> yes, I mean, yeah. He is. Oh my, when I would go, cause we did Stretch Armstrong together. We did Stretch Armstrong together. Every time I would go into that record and I would see him, I'd be like, oh, this is me inside. Oh my God, that's Keith David. <laughs> <laughs> that's me some Keith David right there. That's me some yeah, Keith David. Yeah, that's a fan moment. But then he'd be like, oh yeah. <laughs> OJ, OJ, oh, come on over here. Yeah, you know what I do. And then we were laughing, and I'm like, I'm having real conversations with Keith David. I'm like, this is, this is awesome. This is awesome. But he, another one on his crowd, he's he's a he's a, an actor. Keith David is like an actor, actor. He's one of those actors that, that's doing uh, voiceovers. Does that make sense? So he comes in with that, like, actor vibe and he's just so classic and i this is what i love i love that i run and tell my parents i was like nah, dad mom i worked with keith david today but then That's and then awesome. they watching the, they watching the show and here come keith david on there i'm like there he, there he go you know, <laughs> there, there he go again you know it's like uh -huh. he's everywhere you he's know? everywhere literally yeah, yeah. Literally. Okay, one of the coolest cats one of the coolest cats i've ever met i love both of them i love both of them can you tell? <laughs> right? yeah. Hey, we the same way, so you ain't oh, yeah. definitely. Yeah, we all the yeah. same way here. Yeah, definitely. Some true good brothers, some true good brothers. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. Another thing I wanted to know about your style: did, did stage acting and theatrical performing help at all with the with your style of voice acting? Yeah, sure. I'll take I'll take it as a piece of a pie. I'd say every single thing in my life has has helped me. But the number one thing is just me myself. That's what I learned. Just accepting myself, accepting my my choices, my moments, what I do, and incorporating myself into my work. That's what's helped me. Not playing a character, but but playing myself as that character, or whatever. The more I, I once I got comfortable with being me as what is once I really shined and got through because I, I was just me and I'm doing my thing. I'm bringing my style and myself into it. And yeah, sometimes, sometimes it misses and I'm way off the track, but sometimes it, it hits. But when it hits that, that it, you're getting not only that character, you're getting a piece of me. Every character I play, it's a part of me in there. Definitely. I, that, that's how I'm able to jump into these characters into these roles just by being me and i just took you not being scared to accept to accept bringing my uh, self out you know what i mean yeah not hiding no, that makes sense yeah you don't really hear that a lot that's i like that that concept of pretty much well i'm being real it, with y'all damn it y'all bitch me <laughs> give me all you know, give me all sensitive <laughs> <laughs> well look we appreciate yeah appreciate you getting down with us real. yeah telling you the truth yeah i, right. I definitely like that but speaking of like theatrical performances, I wanted to know what was the concept behind For the Love of the Glove and what was your process for preparing for that? That's, that's really cool. I wanted you to explain that to our- That was, you know, very, of course, very controversial, but Michael Jackson's people were very involved with it, but it came to the writer that they came to them and they came to him and they said they wanted to, wanted to have something about Michael Jackson because of all the bad, nothing about the bad stuff or whatever, but they wanted to right, right. tell a story about Michael Jackson, like a history story, a kind of a fun story. He came up with the concept of a glove coming to life and Mike, Michael Jackson's glove coming to life and being the one 
controlling Michael Jackson and telling him everything what to do. He's the one that, like, for instance, in our play, the mm -hmm. like Michael Jackson can't sing, but once he puts the glove on, oh, he can sing. <laughs> the glove, the glove makes him sing, dance, tells him who to date, tells him to do the commercial, tells him who to work with, and so it goes through all his life. But it goes through the life, like not saying Michael Jackson was making these de decisions. The decisions were coming from the glove. So it's uh, like putting the blame on the glove. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So, um, and so in that, I played the role of Michael Jackson's father. Okay. So I'm like, what am I going to, and, and the play is it's humans and puppets. Right. Michael Jackson was played as a puppet. All the Jacksons were played as puppets. But me as the father, I was played as myself. And I was playing Michael Jackson's father. And I was like, they gonna, what are they going to have me doing? Just beating a, bu a bunch of puppets? I go, I don't know. Oh. I don't want to oh, be yeah. beating a bunch of puppets and having that that that, that image, you know? Right, right. No, nothing like that. It was, you, know, it was, you know, it was nothing like that. Like, I learned about his life. It was like, oh, like how his dad wanted to be a singer and was living through his kids and everything. It was like was uh, being the promoter. So that's really what my role was like, being their manager. That was, I was their manager. Michael, you gonna do what I say. Come on, Michael. You know what I mean? That was, <laughs> that was my role. That was my role. That was my role. And I uh, got to sing. And But it was sad because as soon as we started, as soon as we started getting uh, a lot of hype and got picked up for more shows, that's when COVID happened and like, you know, shut down. Right, oh, right, you know, yeah, so, right. Yeah, so. Because personally, I would love to see that show. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. But but was that like your first musical? No. When I was eight years old, I did a musical. No, I'm joking. Uh <laughs> <laughs> it still counts. It still counts, right? It still counts. Right. It still counts. <laughs> I've been doing musicals since I was five. No, uh <laughs> no, uh but no, it wasn't my first musical. Let me think. I did Newsies. I did Newsies. Oh, so, yeah. I love yeah, Newsies. I yeah. I'm, like, what? I'm like, wait a minute. Why am I Right, right, right. Newsies. Like, right, right. That made that look good. You talk about a musical. Yeah. You know, that movie, like, we took about a year and a half for just rehearsal. Hmm. Learning all those songs. Learning all those dance moves. So it was like a year and a half of just rehearsal. Took a little break. And then came back to film everything. That was, uh, that was pretty taxing, but it was... But, but it was, I learned so, so much to be on a set every single day for that long and to learn how to dance, learn how to fight, learn how to everything. The, the music and dancing to the music, that was really where all, even my little things from musicals in the past, but that's where it really came to a head was on that show, a uh, movie, I should say that movie. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, but yeah, I'm seasoned in musicals. Like hey, that. okay. Yeah, are there any, because I know a lot of people, they do, like, they might have something on Zoom or something recorded. Are there any kind of musicals in the future or anything coming up in that vein that you might want to do? I'm done with musicals. <laughs> 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 I, can, I, can, I can officially say on your show, I will make an announcement. Uh, an Exclusive. Announcement I am done with musicals. <laughs> but so there will not be musicals in my future, no. But is that all you ask? Is if I'm gonna be in some musicals? No, I can't. No, I. That was it. That was it. I got my. I got my feel of it and got my. I did my. Yeah. Piece, so. And you're like, I'm done dipping right, my dip in there. I'm, I'm yeah, done. You know, I'm so, done. You know, I'm the, gone. Theater is a thing. Theater is a thing. It's a whole thing. And I can just say one of the hard things is performing at nighttime, hmm. getting done with the show, coming home at late, and then you're up from the show. And then the next day I have to record voiceovers and singing and doing all oh, that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And all that, I found that my voice was giving out. And I was like, and it was hindering my performances. So, I, I, no, I'm good. <laughs> no, no yeah. more so, yeah. so it's just uh voice acting or voiceover and stuff like that from now on that's just yeah yeah the, 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 the my acting, then my coaching with vo nation and i'm good yeah okay yeah, that's, that's pretty good. oh yeah um, and i wanted to ask of, um, oh go ahead josh what's up uh, it, yeah well, just speaking of vo nation what is it exactly a uh, vo nation is the school that i launched basically i've been because not only have I been doing voice work, but I've been teaching for like over 10 years now. I've been teaching and coaching mm -hmm. voiceovers for over 10 years. I have beginner clients all the way to celebrity clients. I help, and a lot of times they like, when they have auditions, 
they come to me and, uh, and I coach them up. I tell them what, what to do, what not to do, what they're looking for, what they're listening for. And the reason why is because I've been doing, I'm old and been doing this for so long that all these casting people and stuff, I know them, the directors, I know them. I know what they're listening for. I know what they want. I know you, and talk about reading. I've read thousands of scripts that I can pick up a script and I go, ah, okay, I got it. I feel it. Okay. I see what's going on here. I vibe it. And I'm really good at some really honing down and getting you into the character. So the Nation is a thing I started with my partner. It's uh, gonna be classes, seminars, the whole nine, ebook and everything. Everything about VO, everything that I've learned, all my adventures, all my stories coming from me to you to help guide you. Because in my years of teaching, my people, they work and my, and my people, they learn. And, and it was, and it was, I was just like, oh, again, an organic thing that I just like went with. And I'm like, if I'm helping people and, and I'm getting them to find themselves and, and do this VO stuff and really get a handle on it in their own way. then yeah, I just kept rolling with it and came up with these classes and ideas and, and it's been catching like wildfire, wildfire. Yeah, it's VO Nation, VO-Nation.com. But uh, yeah, all the information is on there, but it's really there to help. Really there to help, yeah. Because because if y'all don't look good, then I don't look good. I want my client. There you go. <laughs> yeah. exactly. You there know, you and go. I want them to and everything, and I want and I want them to have great auditions because I want them to say, "Yeah, OG helped me with that," and they go, "Oh, OG helped you with that? Okay, okay." <laughs> you know, and that's so another feather in your I don't play. Yeah. If you're reading, I say go get you a nice book and sit in your bed and read your book, but. We we looking for actors. This is actors, you know. <laughs> this ain't this ain't about good readers. But just being real, you got to be real. You got to be real. Like I've been all night tonight. Good, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> which is a good thing. That's Chance. good. Give it to me, brother. Hey, it's a good thing. We appreciate it. But yeah, yeah, for no, all no. Of our I, viewers I appreciate this here. show. This is a good thing. Certainly, we will put all the information from VO Nation in the description below. So oh, awesome. no worries about that. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. But yeah, OG, like I got it's especially because like Black History Month, like you definitely made history because if I'm correct me if I'm wrong, I know you and Donald Glover portrayed Miles Morales first yeah. for their first his cartoon for Ultimate Spider-Man. Yeah. So what was the process of that? And I know you've certainly followed that character because you've been in Into the Spider-Verse and then you were in the Spider-Man Miles Morales video game. Yeah. So what has that whole process been like from conception to now with that character in particular? The beautiful, uh, one beautiful thing is once you play Spider-Man, you that's just a big honor and that, that sinks in. So to be called back to do other things as Miles Morales and stuff is a beautiful thing. Now with the Donald Glover thing, the crazy thing with that is I, Miles Morales didn't come into until season five. We were like, uh, right. you know, so we already did four seasons. And within the, those four seasons and even season five, I was playing Power Man. So I was yeah. already in the I was already in the show as Power Man, you know, doing my Power thing. Man. And then like season five comes with the Miles Morales and like with Disney, like the, it was, I didn't really know much. I didn't really, they didn't tell me much about it, but I just know that they want, they were going to celebratoire with that. I get it. You want to Eddie Murphy's and them on there. So they did Donald and actually they did a couple other on camera actors too, that they did. And then finally, halfway through the season, a little over half, halfway through the season, they offered me the role. Like, I'm gonna say no, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Are you crazy? Like, I always tell my agent when they go, hey, do you want this? Do you, uh, they got this job for you. I'm like, I always say yes. <laughs> I'm a hooker. Okay. Bring all the Johns to me. Okay. It's just, I'm a hooker. Uh, like, I'm a straight up. <laughs> right, like, don't even ask. To say yes. I'm, and tell me when I got to be there. Yeah. Just give me a time. So, when they, so after over half the, so they go, okay, we're going to have you as Miles Morales. And it was like, I, of course, I was over the moon, but then I was nervous because I had to concentrate on this character and get it right because so many other iconic people. Like, you know, D Donald Glover, he, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. You know what I mean? I love that dude. Yeah. You know, yeah. had, had played this. So it's like I wanted to do my justice and give it my spin. Once again, that's where I just relied on the team and what, you know, what sounded right, what they liked, their picks. They wanted me to go higher in the pitch, lower. But I remember there was, uh, there was this one part where I think it was Power Man and Miles Morales in a scene together. We were in a scene together. 
And and I remember I just went back and forth. Power Man is my into the miles around. I was just talking to myself like a crazy person. <laughs> <laughs> characters, you know. And they go. <laughs> said, look at OG go. Look at OG go. Look at OG go. I'm like, are you kidding? I've been dreaming of this my whole life. I've been doing this in my bedroom. But it's just just exciting to, to be able to be placed in that moment and just take full advantage of it. Because yeah. from that moment and by doing that stuff and taking full advantage, that's how I got Stretch Armstrong. Because those writers that were in that room that day, they're the ones that created Stretch Armstrong on Netflix. Mm. And once they created, they were like, OG, boom, you on, you on board. See? Yeah. That's what's up. So that's how, that's how you like to get that next job and keep it going. But, but yeah, that, that was a difficult thing to get in this, the, follow the shoes of Donald Glover and stuff. Because I don't have that kind of clout and everything. People are going to be like, why are you doing it? Who's this Oogie, Oogie? What is oh, this? No. Oh, no, 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 oh, no. <laughs> oh. So I'm like, hey, y'all, I'm just... I'm just a brother that was given a chance. I mean, <laughs> I'm serious, you know? But but that was a Colette. And I got to say, the director, Colette Sunderman, so I've known her for many years. And Colette has been in my corner more than I can know. And she's a director because she directs Muppet Babies and the Marvel stuff and all kinds of big stuff. But, but from the first time we worked together and we connected and the way she directs me, she's real with me. She'll tell me I suck and I got to bring it up and all that kind of stuff. She did a funny with me one time. She goes, okay, OG, in this scene, uh, your character is, uh, you have to, you're in a theater playing, you have to do some bad acting. This should be no problem for you, OG. This should be no oh, problem for you. Oh, damn. <laughs> I said, come on, oh, come back, girl. She goes, I've been playing, I'm playing. <laughs> but, uh, but we have that bond, that family thing, which, which really can ease me into uh, uh, auditioning for these roles, playing for these roles, making me comfortable. Her being there at Ultimate Spider-Man with the Donald Glover stuff and playing Miles Morales, without her being there, I would have been a wreck, oh, y'all. Mm. Like that pressure and everything and the, the hate and all that, I would have been a wreck. But and but on to Stretch Armstrong, but every time I see her there, she's like my she's my safety net. If I'm on that, that wire and if I fall, mm -hmm. I know she got me. She always, That's she what's always up. has me. That's so cool. um, big shout out to Colette. I, my, my career would not be halfway where it is without her. She's the... Big part of it. Yeah. You'll see on the credits. Her name's on all them credits. <laughs> awesome. Hey, we think you do an amazing job. So yeah, definitely. It's, it's, the, it's there. 100%. Yeah. Thank you. But, and then it's like, not only are you killing it in Marvel, but then also in DC, you cleaned up in, in Justice, you know, playing. How did that, was that kind of the same thing where you just came in for one role and they were like, hey, do this person well, and this person also? How did that work? Uh, and Justice was, Firestorm was my main guy. And I, okay. And so I remember, the biggest thing I remember with that was going on the Warner Brothers lot and then going into the sound room. It was a, I'm in a huge room by myself. Of course, the directors are in the other room, but I had a camera thing in, on my head where there was a camera like right here looking up on me. So I guess they have it look like you and I had this belt thing on. And, and I remember I told them, they're like, okay, you're playing Firestorm. And they were explaining Firestorm to me. And I was like, yeah, remember we talked about comic books and I was like, I was in the firestorm because yeah. that was a black superhero back in the day. And he was like underground, nobody knew it. And I'll never forget, I was like, oh, I go, I know all about firestorm. I go, I used to read the comic books. And they did one of them dog things like that. They go, who in the hell read firestorm back in the day? That was like zero, zero, zero point one of the population. I'm like, well, yeah, I mean, in my head, I'm like, what the hell was one of my black superheroes back then? I mean, I, 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 that was awesome. Yeah. You know, that was yeah. awesome. I remember I collected them. I used to be excited with the, the black man with that fire coming. I was like, that's so cool. Yeah. But what was I going to say with that? That was that was just one of those jobs that I didn't really know. I can't, I don't really know what to say much about that job because that was just one that, you know, one of those political high kind of class jobs where they had me come in. I do my thing and then I just leave. It really wasn't like a, I, I had no knowledge of nothing really. I didn't really know what was up really. But I do have a funny, I do have a funny. Like I said, I had this gear on with a camera coming up and I remember mm -hmm. we took a break. And then after the break, they put the equipment back on and they go, and I was like, okay, I'm ready to go. And so they go, okay, we're about to get started. And they go, um, OG, they go, um, could you, uh, could you get a tissue, please, and get those boogers out your nose? Because the camera 
What's going on? Oh, What's going on? Oh, right gosh. oh my goodness, they see my boogers. They see my uh, and they telling me to take my boogers out. I go, I was, I'm embarrassing, but I just laughed. Y'all just laughed it off. Thank God, but I'm like, who, 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 what, what job do you have where they go? Could you get them boogers out your nose? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I was like, oh, exactly. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We're like, oh, my bad. Uh, my bad. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> like, any bats in the cave now? <laughs> All right, clean out that cave, man. Right. Oh, man. But yeah, that was a cool job. That was, but yeah. That was so, was it a mocap suit you were in? Was it, did you do motion capture for that? No, because mocap is where it's the balls all over, right? Oh, and you said it, you had a, yeah. this was a, yeah, like a, a camp this face was a camera. Headpiece. Right? So I had a headpiece, oh. a thing around my waist. So like this mm. heavy thing around my waist and a headpiece on with a camera. And when I saw like Firestorm, like my some of my features are on there. So I think oh, that's, you know, that's what that's okay. If you look at all the characters, their features, are, that's why they were filming us, like our mouths and the way we like pronunciate and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so our features, that's what, I, and I didn't know that until I saw the video game. Once I saw it, I said, that's like, Okay, I get it now. I get what they were doing. Some high tech stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I got you. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Oh, sorry. But I had. Not, not go ahead. I have What's to ask, now? since we're talking comic books, I have, to, I have to ask, like, what were you reading back in the day? What was your comic book game like? Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Okay. Mm. Uh, uh, big fan of that. There was one called Nam. Back in the day, there was one Nam, and then Firestorm. I did Firestorm, and then I liked I liked all those little off off brands. Like there was like Ninja Bunny or something like that. This Yoshinoi <laughs> Bunny or whatever. But all kinds of, of course, I read the Spider Mans and stuff like that. But I was really interested in like kind of the off brands, the ones that people never heard of, not the mainstream ones. I I like that creates creative stuff. My my dad was always into sci fi movies and everything, all that that futuristic stuff, like the kind of off thing. So I guess my mind kind of goes there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, well, I'm big on TM. Like I love Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yes. Like when the first, yeah, let me, oh, yeah, when that yeah. first, dude, do you guys remember the the drawings? on the team that like the cover art like the art inside yeah. oh my god whether it was black and white black and white or it was color and the way they came out with so many different styles like each style was like dope i was they would take it to different levels all the time i was like how did how are they making this even different and better? This is awesome. But it doesn't, it didn't mess up the past one. It like just, no. it compl they complimented each other. That's yeah. why I'm such a fan. And even now I'm still a fan. Yeah. That's one of those things that never, it's, it's just the mark of a good character. Just like Spider-Man, just like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. You could do it over and over again. And it's never going to get old. Yeah. Yeah. So like uh, you talked about um, sci-fi. So you, I'm guessing you're a Star Wars fan because everybody we talk to has Star, Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I like Star Wars. I'm not like, I'm not cute. This is what, it, but I have history with Star Wars. I'll never forget that my dad and my dad's friend, like they brought me to watch the Star Wars movie when I was a, a little kid, I remember. And I'll never forget standing in that long line, waiting to get into that movie theater. And I'll never forget my dad being pissed off when I had to pee. <laughs> at, the, at the climax of it, I forget what part, but I was like, Daddy, I gotta pee. I, and he goes, now? He goes, you been, he goes at this point in the movie? And I go, yes, I gotta pee. <laughs> and so, and he goes, come on, boy. Come on, boy. We the only black ones in the theater. Oh, <laughs> so God. He's like, hurry up and pee. <laughs> but that's right. That's my memory of Star Wars. I mean, of course I, of course I love Star Wars. Uh, you know the originals, the original, all the yeah, it's back because it brings it back, back to those days. And um, yeah, yeah, I like the new stuff too. I like how they're doing it, revamping it, keeping it going. Yeah, yeah. Mandalorian stuff like that. Oh yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. Wow. You, you put see. Back. Yeah, yes, exactly. <laughs> we all <understand. laughs> yeah. You push the button on that one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, because this is what I think about Star Wars, though. I'm like, because I was a little, like, I told you that story and I was a little kid. But now me having my little kid, I'm like, oh, yeah, there's these other gender, these the young ones that, that are going to have that. They don't know Star Wars yet. You know, exactly. now they're going to, they're going to get to experience it. And we're going to get, now we're able to show them, like, come here and watch this. <laughs> watch what they're to watch, you know? Watch, 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 you keep this out, boy. You got any questions? 
you you ask Papa. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> right. It's like, it's, now it's now I see how bringing that experience like to the younger people is oh yeah. It's not just about me. Does he understand, uh, like, Spider-Man? How does he feel about his dad being Spider-Man? Oh, he don't like it. He don't watch any of my stuff. Oh, what? <laughs> oh, dang. That's always the case, I swear. Bro, it's yeah. always like that with kids. Yeah, like, right? they don't even watch no. what their parents do. Yeah, he, I try to shove it in his face. <laughs> and he's just like, I, I, like, hey, look what I did. Yeah, he runs out the room. He <laughs> don't care. He don't care. Like, like every time somebody says that, I think about the uh, picture. It's like Chris Pratt. Pratt, and his son is dressed up as Captain America, and he like got the saddest look on his face. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah, my son doesn't like who I am. Man. Totally, I'm even like, totally, totally. That's too much. Yeah, I'm like, you don't like one thing. I got one. <laughs> one, nothing. Crickets, crickets. He don't care. He don't care. He's like, and to be honest, I'll try to sing and go along with things, and this is what he does. You'll see a little hand come up. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> he tell you. I'm like your daddy is voiceover, and you shut me. You shut me up. That's all he does. Man. Oh man! Yeah. Uh, that must be rough. His friends will love me. His friends. Exactly. Right. Like That's all that matters. Like right. friends, his friends. Right. Look, when, yeah, when he gets friends. older, you'll probably like yeah. Use you like to to brag on. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah my dad yeah. did. That. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly. what my dad right. does. Miles, that's my dad. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> See, exactly. Whatever with him. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. But that's good stuff. Oh, go ahead, Josh. What's up, man? Oh, well, yeah, not to cut you off, Chad, but but yeah, OG, yeah. like, how did you um stumble across those more high profile roles like with Firestorm? And especially like the roles with your roles in Naruto series. Like, how did you stumble across those kinds of roles? Just, just the long road, the longevity of being at it and being in it and kick ass auditions and them knowing me and hearing my name over and over for many years. And you build up and you build up to it. Of course, when I was starting, I wasn't getting with those roles, but as I built up my, my resume and my career and people started working with me and word gets around that. I take direction while I'm fun to work with. You're like, good spirit, I'm there. All that stuff matters. And the word of mouth goes a long way. Talent goes another long way. It's a big piece of the pie. So everything is a part of it. But but it was just a uh, consistency on jobs, mm -hmm. being kick-ass, consistency on auditions, making sure you're taking all that seriously. If I'm having a bad day and I'm slacking, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna put a poor product out there. If yeah. somebody says, hey, give me an Irish, give me an Irish Jamaican voice. I don't know how to do that. I ain't giving you that. <laughs> <laughs> no, right, how, no. How, how do you do that? No, no one, you know, no one to say no. I am a hooker, but I ain't that. I'm not a Irish Jamaican hooker, okay? <laughs> right, right? No, it's like, how do you even, how do you even do an Irish do Jamaican like then I feel like that's, that's so crazy. hard. Exactly. No. Oh, that was it, and that was an audition that went out two or three times because they couldn't find a voice for it. Because like, <laughs> right. who's, who's gonna do that? Who's gonna do that? Gonna do that? <laughs> what are you talking about? Hey, you know, give me an Irish Jamaican Eskimo. <laughs> that's ball. <laughs> You're like, <laughs> You're like I don't know how to sound bald, but you know, <laughs> right, right, right. But uh, for you, was um was. Cause I know there's like a, a stark difference between like prelay and dubbing. Was dubbing like a big like learning curve for you, or was it something that it you was, got? It was. It was because when you're doing cartoons, you're like you're creating that, and you're you can do your thing. But dubbing, it's like you follow. You got to follow. There's only I mean, a strict five, rules. You got to get in there. So sometimes you can't get all your acting beats in there. Sometimes I want to breathe, but I ain't got time to breathe. <laughs> True. You gotta, you just gotta say your line, brother. Say your line. That's the way you can. <laughs> Dubbing is more about. It's all about acting with time and time. So having that, whether it's a quick, you have a quick time or a longer time. In those sessions, they change the script right away on you. So you have to be flexible. You have to be on it. But it, it's mainly about timing and being flexible because they change the script like a mug. Because the flat. Oh, really? And they, they're doing. Yeah. You know, like that, they go, they try to get like a B word in there or something. So, so I don't know, bat? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then like, OJ, OJ, we put you on mute. Please don't help. You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's too much. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, so they don't want any input whatsoever. No, right, no, not from no, you. no, they do. They do. Sometimes when you're in the moment and like, yeah. you know, they're thinking, of course, these. 
Chad, I told you these are my jokes and they get no better. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> For my bad, I forgot. My bad, my no, bad. like they might think of something. Of course, I might spit out a word here or there. They try to see, but you know, that of course it's a team effort. It really is a team effort. They, they, want, you, they want you to sound good and look good because that makes them look good with their work that they're putting out. That that company, that, you know, whatever, that engineer that he's putting there, th these people are putting their name on the product. So For they sure. want the product to be the best that they it could be. So nobody, they're not there to sabotage you. We're all there trying to make this go and, and sound the best, which was great. Yeah. No, that makes, because yeah. at the end of the day, then everybody looks good. So that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But, so, uh, oh, what's that? Oh, yeah, OG, did you ever have to work in a Zoom call? Like, I know that pro probably hard to do, but did, did you ever have to, like, do any voice lines when you had to see other people on their respective video calls? Or oh, a lot, video? a lot. Especially with COVID, that, that yeah. happened a lot. That's, like, kind of the norm now, having, mm -hmm. like, the producers mm -hmm. be on Zoom. What was it? The other day, I did my show in my closet here, <clears throat> and uh, but I have to have my, but I have my iPad. I have my laptop for the recording, but my iPad's on the Zoom so that I can see everybody. That's the way, that's the norm now. Yeah. Did you have an in-house setup before COVID happened or was that something you had to do because everybody- I had one a while ago, but I really didn't use it because my agency was across the street from where I lived. So oh, I, was, nice. yeah. I would just go there and record. So then I was like, I don't need this. But then once COVID happened, I was like, okay, I need a setup. And I, set, I did a little setup in my closet. One of these Verite Entertainment where I do a lot of shows with, they, they helped me out, set up my booth by get, getting me a microphone and Oh, there you go. Yeah. Saying, uh, hooking me up. Yeah, so uh, that, they helped me out a lot. They helped me out a lot. But yeah, I had to get it together. I had to get it together. You had to get it together a little bit. No, yeah. I definitely. At least you got it now. You know what I'm yeah, saying? You all yeah. So. Right? Oh, yeah. yeah. And it had to happen real quick. So. Yeah. yeah. Totally. totally. <laughs> No, that's what's up. That's what's up. But on that same vein, though, since we've been inside and a lot of people have been quarantined and all of that good stuff, like, what have you been binge watching lately? Like, what are you watching right now? Basketball. Uh, <laughs> okay. Basketball. Uh, uh, I'm here. But binge watching. Do you binge watch a lot? Or I, really? I do, because I'm not a sleeper. I watch a lot of stuff. You name it, I wa I've watched it. But it, because, but I, that's my homework, though, too. That's all my <laughs> friends. Like, I, I watch everything on TV and stuff because <clears throat> I'm looking at those little commercials in between, listening to those voices. Uh, I'm listening to, I, I'm listening to tones and all that. So I, I, I watch a ton of TV. I watch a ton of TV. I even watch Nick Jr. Disney <laughs> because I because I get those scripts. Those commercials that play on Disney Jr. are different from the ones that play at during Adult Swim. That's true. You know, true. That's true. I need to be up on game. The LeBron James of it, and how he has he takes care of his body and his mental and everything on it. So that's why I'm watching TV. So Netflix, uh, Hulu, regular TV, like I try to. I want to be abreast on everything. I don't want to. I don't want to come with some '80s quotes. That like they're like, bruh, this is 2021. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> wait, where you been? I'm talking about Mork and Mindy. You know what I mean? Like, right. like, like, wait what? a second. They <laughs> like <Who's> what? <laughs> talking about aging myself, right? Talking about aging myself. So. Right. <laughs> hey, I don't know what that is. Oh dang. But you oh, that's Robin Williams, man. Yeah, OG, he's the youngest one out of all of us. So he uh, Mark, yeah. Mark, no, no, no. Josh, oh, Josh, Josh, Josh. Josh. Oh, 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 I was like, no. That, <laughs> that's what I was, I was telling Mark, because Marcus was the one talking about the age thing. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, no. Wait, who's now, the Marcus baby? Marcus is the old man. Who's the baby? That's Josh. Josh. That's Josh. Yeah. Josh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the baby of the bunch. The baby of the bunch. Huh? Yeah, yeah, basically. Yeah, unfortunately. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then me and Demetrius in the middle, and Marcus on the other side. So. Okay. See <laughs> that on the other side, day. Hey, right. hey, April OG. I will be hitting the thirty mark. I'm crossing oh, really? over. Oh, really? Yes, awesome. sir. Little young yeah. thing, you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an old man. Okay. I'm an old man. Oh, man. Nah. Uh, 
But but yeah, OG, one of the things, and like I said, man, it's been a pleasure talking to you, man. Like seriously, yeah. we really enjoyed our time. But before um, we let you go, I just want to know, like, one of the last things: what advice would you have for somebody looking to pursue a career in voice acting? Take acting classes first and okay. foremost. Take acting classes. It's about acting. It's about it. Get your act on. <laughs> Get your act on. Get your act on. Put it on the shirt, guys. Your sensitivity, your aggressiveness. Mr. Baby was talking about. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Baby. Mr. Baby. <laughs> Mr. Baby. <laughs> Everything oh, okay. in between. But it's all about the acting. I would say get your acting skills up. The, mo the, the one thing that's helped me the most is taking my acting classes. Those These acting classes. And because think about it. Yeah, in, in one day, I can get an audition for f four different characters. I have to jump in and out of different characters. It's being like a schizophrenic a little bit, but really it's jumping into characters and being characters. So getting your acting on and just, and also be prepared, being prepared, mm. having your microphone, being ready for when that time comes, you on it, you on it. Read everything. Don't just read your lines. Don't be stingy. <laughs> don't be selfish. Don't don't get a script and talk about. Oh, I'm just gonna read my lines. And no, you gotta read everything. Read everything. Yeah. So that that's yeah, one, two, three. That's three good points of advice. There you go. There you go. That's that's definitely yeah. that's definitely all good stuff. And I know our yeah. viewers and listeners really appreciate all of that. So definitely. heard it here Thank first, you. guys. You heard it from the best guy. Yeah. So. But uh, before you go, I wanted you to uh, let our viewers and our listeners know, like, uh, where they can find you on social media, certain shows that they should look out for right now. Like, what do you got coming up? All of that. Okay, stuff. Um, let them know. Social media. It's just, it's really just my name. O-G-I-E-B-A-N-K-S. You Google that. You, I'm all over the place. But the one thing is shows coming out. Droners. I can say that. I'll you say Droners is coming out because there's been some little bit of advertisement for that. I don't know if I signed NDAs. But I have, I have, let's just say with NDAs, it's hard for me to say. Oh, but you can catch me on Spotify. I'm on Spotify. I do the commercials on Spotify. Nice. I'm doing hey. I'm doing commercials on Spotify. But I have a couple of shows coming out on Disney. Disney coming out soon. Should be coming out this year. Two shows. And then I just picked up another show, but I don't know where that's going. Oh, Muppets, but Muppet Babies. Muppet Babies. Nice. Hey, Muppet Babies, hey, Muppet Babies uh, guys. This is, uh, Muppet we're coming up to our last season and the finale show is like pretty phenomenal. I won't give anything away. Okay. Uh, oh, and a shout out to Cree Summer. Shout out to Cree Summer. Yes, uh, yes, 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 so, yes. Shout out, yes. I mean, let me tell you fellas, let me tell you, I did a song with Cree Summer. What? Hey. It was a hey. Muppet Baby hey. song, but I did a song. With hey, that's all that matters, hey. man. Hey, you got you got that's legendary right, right there. Yeah. That's legendary. <laughs> that's legendary. Uh, <laughs> look, hey, hey, OG, out of all three of them, they always get mad at me because I'm the only one who got to see her like in person at, a, at one of the cons. And yeah. she, they all hate me for that. And I you, hold it over their heads, man. You, oh, yeah. For now. For now. For now. You got me clapping like I'm on a game show. <laughs> <laughs> I love yeah, that. Shout I out to Cree. I love that. Yeah, right. beautiful woman. Shout out to her. Mad love. Mad love. Yeah. And, and yeah, yeah definitely. And yeah, OG, before we go, um, I have to ask, what's your favorite basketball team? Lakers. Oh, my, my, dad, my dad used to take me to the games. We used, to sit, we used to sit right next to Chick Hearn. Yeah, and so he used to, I remember, and I was just a young kid, but like the job that he had, they would throw him tickets. And, and we had a tradition of going to these Laker games. So awesome. I used to see Magic and Kareem. Dad, I was like a young buck back then, but but the Magic and being there with my dad, and that, yeah, that's, yeah, until I die. I, I'm the second of the Clippers, because LA, I love LA. Sure. And yeah, they move into England, oh, yeah. it's all good. You know? <laughs> 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 so uh, yeah, Lakers first, Clippers second. Yeah. Okay, okay. That's so, awesome. whenever, so when people say, Who's gonna win the Super Bowl? Who, who I go the Lakers. You know? <laughs> who's, gonna who's gonna win hockey? The Lakers. The Lakers. <laughs> that's 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 that good old purple and gold. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yep. Uh, yep. Yep. That's sure. awesome. That's awesome. And you're and you're just you talking about your father. Like he seems like really awesome. He reminds me of a uh, of me and Joshua's dad as well. Because if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't have been into superheroes. And he took us to our first convention. So that's a yeah. So. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, and my so dad definitely. and my dad got me in the Star Wars, and it's so crazy because he's not a big fan, but he was just like, "Yeah, I'm gonna take you to see this movie I saw like long time ago," 
Uh-huh. Because he just wanted to take us, and then it got me on there. But he's the reason why I'm in sports. So, like, oh, he's, that's awesome. That was that's my like awesome. halfway to that's sports. Awesome. So yeah, me and my brother, we love sports, and it's because of him. So yeah. Yeah, Joshua, man. Joshua, your turn. Oh yeah, like not only did me and Chad's dad take us to our first convention, but he also took us to our first basketball game. Yeah, it was. Yeah, he took us to go see the Hawks play. Hey, can um, I say yeah. one thing really quick? I really love watching the the basketball the the when they get picked. What is that called? When oh, they the get draft. picked? The draft. Yeah. Draft, yeah. The reason why I love the draft now is. Do you see how many fathers are standing next to their sons? Yes, man. It's how many? Do you, do you notice how many really black cool. fathers that is, that in, is awesome. are in their sons' lives? And we are actually seeing it on TV. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Awesome. I have really taken it. I have watched the draft the past two years, and I've cried, y'all. I've cried. <laughs> wow. I'm not lying. I cried when you real. see them crying and their dads there hugging them. I'm just like, I mean, how could you not get them? It's, it's a big deal. I'm man. not a robot. I'm not a robot. It's That's a big like, deal. That just, it hits me hard. But I love yeah. that. I love that. Yeah. So I love that. I love we ending on this, baby. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, man. Sure. Please shout out to all the dads. A big yeah. shout out, guys. Big shout out for everybody. Come yes, on. for sure. For sure. But yeah, so definitely uh, we'll put everything that OG just said in the description below, including VO Nation. So please, guys, if you're an aspiring voice actor, please go check out VO Nation. And we'll put all yes. of that stuff in the description below. So just like every week, guys, guess what time it is? Shame. Uh, it's promotional. He is time for the shameless promotional. Yes, and we are the Score Roundtable Podcast. You can catch us every Friday on majorsonmusic.com at 10 a.m. Pacific Time, 12 p.m. Central Time, and 1 p.m. Eastern Time. And you can catch us on YouTube at any time. And if you like the video, smack the like button, share the video, because that helps too. Uh, subscribe and leave a comment about anything that happened through the video, whether you want to say what your favorite comic book character is, or anything else we, we will read all your comments we'll be down there so comment. exactly oh, like we also, say every week join our join our facebook group do, also join our facebook <laughs> yeah, group please. follow us on instagram twitter all the social yeah. we'll be there we'll we interact pretty well we're, we're friendly definitely please, please talk to us definitely follow us <laughs> yeah we're on all, all, all social yeah, media we did. Guys, we did. so, so <laughs> definitely 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 but yes guys this has been totally awesome once again og i just want to thank you for coming out this has been big for black history month man we appreciate everything you do for the just for the african-american community man thank you so much yeah thank you and you ended and you ended off the month on our podcast with black history Month. (laughs) yeah hey like here we go (laughs) definitely definitely So, yes, guys, I would love if everybody can introduce themselves one more time before we head out. And I am your host, Chad Singleton. Dimitri. Josh Singleton. Marcus. Do I say me, too? Yeah. Yeah. OG. OG Banks. OG, OG Banks. Here he is. (laughs) And this has been the Square Round Table. We are out. Peace. Peace.